It's Madden NFL 22 on EA Sports. And today's clash of conferences is just moments away. It's the Seahawks and the Bills coming up next. From the home of the Bills since way back in 1973, there's a look at Bills Stadium just outside of Buffalo, New York. A few moments ago, to the delight of this Buffalo crowd, it was the Bills racing out of the tunnel as they get set to match up with Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks. Alongside Charles Davis, I'm Brandon Gordon, and CD, you think about our quarterback matchup here. We've got a couple of guys who are definitely dangerous when you get down near the red zone. Russell Wilson of the Seahawks, Josh Allen of the Bills. And he used the perfect word there, Brandon, dangerous. Yeah, they're dangerous just about anywhere on the field, but the red zone, that's where they absolutely excel. And I think it's because they can keep defenses off balance. You know they can run, you know they can pass. The RPOs come into play, but the biggest thing is when the pocket breaks down, they can create something out of nothing and sting a defense. And we are underway in Buffalo. And no run back here, so they'll bring it out to the 25. Seattle's first go on offense, forthcoming, and under center, of course, Russell Wilson. And similar to his nickname, Russell Wilson has a dangerous mix of skills, the ability to throw from the pocket and extend plays and throw on the run. Not to mention an absolute winner. Usually has his team in the playoffs competing for Super Bowl opportunities. First and ten, it's Wilson. And his first pass here is going to fall incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you had. Maybe you get it in pre-snap. He locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. On second and ten, Wilson toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. Well, so far in this drive, they've done some good work. They force incompletions on first and second down, bring up third and ten. That brings up the big question. Do they bring pressure or do they play coverage on this down? Working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And he's going to be brought down short of the first at about the 31-yard line. It's a gain of six, but not enough, as he'll be forced to punt on their first drive of the game. So they're forced to punt on fourth as this one's away. And no return here. Where will they spot it? On, they say just outside go. the 20-yard line. Well, the Buffalo offense coming out, and it is Josh Allen who is at the helm. And in this league, there are many quarterbacks who have their most success running the ball, while there are others who have big arms. There aren't too many guys who can do both. And at the end of many games, this guy leads his team not just in passing, but in rushing as well. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 21. Now the first carry for Devin Singletary. Oh, he breaks a tackle, and he's got an alley. And he's going to get a solid gain of nine before being brought down second and right at a yard. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field to ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling, and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. They tried to throw on second down, unsuccessful. Now it's third and one. To throw, it's Allen. Dancing to his left. Allen, nifty footwork. And they're going to have this across midfield and inside the 45. That's something you have to be aware of as a defense and have to find a way to account for him. And if you're not going to use a spy, you're telling your guys to keep your eyes on him because when he breaks out and makes plays like that, all he does is hurt you. Have to at least be able to contain him somewhat. There they could not. Oh, 
So from Seahawk territory now, it's first and 10 at the 44-yard line. Now Allen, flush to his right. He's going to let this go. Back of the end zone. He will find Diggs in the end zone. Touchdown, Buffalo. Stephon Diggs, 44 yards. And the Bills have taken the early lead. So there is the big arm of Josh Allen on display. He can throw it as deep as anybody, and that was an absolute laser. And we knew that this offense was going to try and put pressure on the secondary. That was something they talked about with us. They knew that they had an advantage, pressed it, and there you go. Big play for a touchdown on their very first possession. The try here for the extra point. And it's 7-0 Buffalo. A drive there of just four plays. And it ends in a Buffalo touchdown. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. This is DJ Reed returning. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. Seattle's offense coming back onto the field, ready for their second drive. And on the first drive, three and out. Now, I know that these are professional athletes, but I would imagine sometimes you, you get the nerves at the beginning of a game still, don't you? Those don't ever go away. And typically, what I've heard from guys and what I remember from playing, if you don't have nerves at the start of a game, it's not going to be a great day for you. You're not really ready to play. So finding a way to harness those nerves and not let them affect you in a negative way, that's what all the guys are looking for. You can see the time and effort and thought that they put into their passing game because it was evident right there. It looks like a simple pitch and catch, but you and I both know that they have planned for this and worked hard to make it happen. And nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. Certainly a nice job there by the defense rallying to the football and getting him on the ground, but I think the play gets made by the defensive front because if they can't get upfield, their job is to go ahead and get low, almost get into a ball sometimes, stack things up, and make it difficult for the runner to find a hole. And he's got the... Down a yard or two shy of the 40 before he's out of bounds. A good chance this is four down territory if they're unable to convert. But right now looking at a third and three. From the gun, it's Wilson. That's complete. Hits Carson out of the backfield. And he is going to have a Seahawks first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. Well, they've certainly done a nice job spreading the ball around on this drive. This time he gets it out to his back, and it's another nice play and another first down. They've got the defense on their heels a little bit. They're reacting instead of being aggressive and making plays. Wilson after the play fake to Carson. Catch is made by Metcalf. And he's brought down, but not before he reaches the eight-yard line. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against him a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. They'll try and run for it on first and goal. And he's going to ball his way down to about the one-yard line. It's a good pickup of seven yards, and now they're looking at second and goal. They'll try to run with Carson, and he is in for the Seattle touchdown. Chris Carson punching it in from a yard away. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. 
That almost looked too easy, and I think thanks goes to the offensive line for making it look easy. Yeah, I agree with you totally on that one. I'm not sure how much everyone understands the preparations that go into a game for an offensive line because there's a reason that running backs and quarterbacks give them big gifts at the end of the season after a big year. The consistency and the continuity it takes to know each other and execute their blocks is pretty impressive. Myers connects on the PAT, and that will tie our score here in this opening quarter of play. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. McKenzie will not return this and will be brought out to the 25. So here come the Bills out for their second drive, and they're hoping to redo their efforts of the last drive when they got into the end zone. And just think of what it's like now on the sideline, because when you score a touchdown, you have to go over and look at the tablet and see what you did on the last drive. When you scored points, it's a whole lot better view than when you're trying to figure out how to fix things there. Allen and the Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 25-yard line. Now he's going to swing this one out to his running back. And yeah, they nearly get this all the way to midfield. Mark him down at the 49. Two teams all tied after one. Second quarter now in Buffalo. It's the Bills in control of the football as they've got it with a first and ten. Allen going to throw on the move to his left. And the catch made, this is Emmanuel Sanders. And they'll work this down to the 40-yard line, tackled there. So on the other side of the field now, it's first and 10, as they've got things rolling on this drive. Here's Allen to throw it, forced out to his left. And that one going to be off target and incomplete. Similar to a shooter in basketball, just connected on the previous shot. They run another set for him on the next play. Now we have a guy who made the catch. They try to get the big one downfield, but came up empty. Now Allen again. We'll get this out wide to Singletary. And he doesn't quite make it, taking it with it, an eyelash. Dropped at the one. A big game there for the Bills. The thing that hurt on that play, the missed tackle, that allowed the extra yardage. It's a matchup game in the NFL. You get the guy that you want isolated, have him miss a tackle, and off you go. They come out with one back and three tight ends. Singletary. And he is going to lose yardage here. That's going to go as a loss of a yard, and it'll be second down. That's a really alert defense there because they saw the heavy look come in from the offense. Countered it with extra linebackers who brought a little bit of speed and heft and able to really make a big-time play for their defense. On second and goal, Allen, and he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from a yard out, and the Bills have taken the lead. That was not a design run. It was supposed to be a pass, but it turned into an exceptional run. What a scramble for a touchdown. on for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So the drive there 
took six plays. And it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. After the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. Here come the Seahawks now, set to take over on offense. They trail a one-score deficit, 14-7, as they come up first and 10. Play action, it's Wilson. To the right side and complete to Metcalf. And he's going to be out of bounds right at midfield. And another thing that makes the comeback run really effective is that oftentimes after you've made the initial move, receivers breaking away from the defensive back, and that makes it a really tough play to defend. A nice chunk of yardage picked up there. First down, Carson. And this one goes nowhere. Losing yardage on the play back at the 46. It's a loss of four there, bringing up second down. I have a feeling they'll stay committed to running the football, especially on their early downs. They just haven't had a whole lot of success just yet. So a step in the wrong direction. Now they'll look to make amends on second and 14. Wilson. They set up the screen to Penny. And some space here. And he takes this one down almost all the way to the 30. That was a beautifully executed screen pass. Let the rushers get upfield. The blocking forms in front. Lofted it to the runner. And now, not only does he have open space in front of him, He's got an escort as well, and they pick up big yardage. We've hit the two-minute mark of the second quarter, 14 to seven. A reminder that when halftime rolls around, Jonathan Coachman will have all the highlights and analysis of this first half of play from our studios in Orlando. And now a throw on first down there, but it's incomplete. They've given up a few first downs on this drive, but getting the incompletion there, that should give them something to build on and maybe turn the tide. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Now Wilson. He hits his target. Lock it. And he's got a first down as the tackle made at the Bills 16. Well, that's what you're looking for when you want to throw the ball downfield. You want one of those guys who can play out on the perimeter, can play out wide, who can not only get open, but when they're covered, can uncover themselves downfield and create catches. So the ball down to the 16 here for first and 10. Inside the red zone here. They'll look to throw. They'll get this out wide to Penny. And the Seahawks are looking at first and goal as he's tackled all the way down at the two-yard line. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. They'll try to run this one in. And he will score. Touchdown, Seattle. Chris Carson with his second touchdown here in this first half. And the Seahawks just an extra point away from tying this thing up. 
So it was the passing game that got him down here, but closer to the goal line, it's the running game that gets him home. Certainly appears that they lulled the defense into thinking that the passing game was going to be it the entire drive. Nice change up there going to the running game to get him over the goal line. Now Myers for the extra point. And we've got a good one brewing. We're all knotted up at 14. So the drive winds up going 75 yards in seven plays. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. Isaiah McKenzie now on the return. And his guys will get the football right at the 20-yard line. The Bills going to take over now late in this first half. And with a little under a minute to play, they may be looking to pick up some yardage here, maybe try and come up with a field goal to seize the lead before intermission. On first down, Allen. Nifty footwork at the 45. And they work this well upfield across the 45. First down now, but that clock rolling. Here's Allen. Steps away to his left. Now he'll let it go on the run. Deep left side. And that nearly intercepted. With a free safety roaming into position, almost had it, but it's second down. I like the thought process there. They connected on a big play, and sometimes you find the defense vulnerable. So they went for the bigger shot, went for it all on that one. This time, they were ready for it. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. So now third and 10, a big play to start the drive, but nothing since. A play fake to Singletary, and now it's Allen. Allen, nifty footwork. And he's corralled, but not before getting it inside the 35. Now the Bills are going to use the first of their timeouts as they stop it with 11 seconds remaining in this first half. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Allen, he'll buy some time right. Allen, nifty footwork. And all the way inside the 15 before they drop it. Now whistles and a timeout with three seconds left in the first half. So three seconds here remain in the half. On is the field goal unit to see about getting three points. The kick by Bass is good. And that will do it for this first half. So we've reached halftime here in Orchard Park with the Bills taking the lead into the break. As we'll head down to Orlando, that's where we find our man Jonathan Coachman at our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in, everyone, to an abbreviated version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. First up, though, let's run through the next-gen stats for the Seahawks in that first half. And despite the fact that they're down on the scoreboard, they were able to have some success throwing the football in that opening half. Meanwhile, for the Bills, they too found some success throwing the football. But I think both teams would say there's room for improvement in the second half. Final adjustments being made for the second half. So with that, we get you back up to Orchard Park and rejoin Brandon and Charles. Okay, Coach, thanks as always. This one's still anyone's game as we welcome you back for quarter number three. A field goal, the difference. 17-14 is the score. Back underway here now in this third quarter. McKenzie will not return this, and it'll be brought out to the 25. But the Bills offense set to take over to begin quarter number three, and they've got the lead CD. What do you expect from them in this second half? Well, I like what they were able to do on the ground in the first half because they had a lot of success running the ball, and I certainly think we'll see more of that. But I'd keep an eye on that defense, and I think their coaches up in the box will do the exact same thing. If they start to see one or two guys start to creep towards the line of scrimmage, that'll be licensed to take some shots downfield. Two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. 
And meanwhile, Allen's throw here pulled in by Beasley. And they work this well upfield across the 45. And that's a more than acceptable read right there because it's zone coverage. So timing is everything. This time he waits for his man to come open, puts it right on him, and they pick up a first down. First down with Singletary. And he's up across midfield and down into Seattle territory. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. And there we saw one of the downsides of blitzing during a rundown because sometimes you get out of your gaps. You don't fit the run quite as well because you're headed towards the ball carrier with abandon. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They go right back to Singletary. And he'll get it down here to the 43. In the first half, he was held in check on the ground, but despite that lack of production, they still have the lead. Yeah, and they've got to feel fortunate about that. If they could actually get production from their lead horse, that would help open up this offense and widen this margin, too. Throwing on first down is Allen. Escaping the pressure right. Now he'll let it go deep right side. And this nearly an interception, but it's incomplete. A well, turnover really would have helped him there, but not to be. They've been trying and trying, but they haven't sacked him yet. He's been able to get away and make plays. Tried to make another one downfield right there, but to no avail. And this is caught inside the five. And they do get him down, but not before he's able to slip it inside the five-yard line. A big game there for the Bills. I guess that answers the question of whether or not they're going to try to play conservative and protect this lead in the third quarter. And I think this is something we're seeing more and more of in the NFL. Teams not playing to protect leads. Teams playing to extend them. Now Allen. Bind, and he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen, his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the Bills take the opening kickoff in the third quarter and drive right down the field to extend their lead. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give him a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Here's Bass now for the extra point. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So this drive spans seven plays. And it was Josh Allen using his legs to polish things off. To the touchdown bass to kick it away no run back here for reed so this will come out to the 25. here comes the seahawks offensive unit they'll have it first to begin the third and their deficit a little wider than it was at halftime does that touchdown a minute ago change the thinking here at all i think it does at least a little bit because now Urgency has to start setting in. You can't go out there and go three and out and run the risk of falling behind substantially, but you have to do it without pressing, because pressing, that'll lead you into bigger errors. Going for Metcalf on the deep ball. It's incomplete. Took a shot, couldn't connect. I'm sure this isn't a novel thought, but maybe run some simpler routes instead of trying to get it all back in one shot. Defense certainly appears to be ready for him. Try and get it back little by little instead of in big chunks. On second down now, it's Carson. And he's upended after a gain of two out to the 27. 
Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. Force in, completion on first down, and you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. Now a third down throw, but it misses the target incomplete. Now here's Michael Dixon as he'll punt it away for the second time. His first punt, 48 yards. This one looks equally as good. Calls for the fair catch, makes the fair catch just inside the 15-yard line. That's going to go in the books as a 55-yard punt. Well done. And the Bills will be backed up to start the drive. They'll have it first and 10. The Bills now with a first and 10 at their own 14-yard line. Throwing to start the drive. Allen. And he's dropped just shy of the 25 at the 24. Not only another first down, that also puts him over 100 yards rushing. That's not something you see very often in the NFL. We see it more in college. But I think with more of the melding of the college game with quarterbacks, We'll see this a little bit more often in the future. On a jet sweep, this is Beasley. And just no chance of turning the corner. He can only get back to the line of scrimmage. Second and ten coming up. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there. All 11 guys on defense diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. We're in the third quarter in upstate New York with a second and ten. To the air. Allen steps away. Going deep for Diggs. Oh, this is taken in. It's complete. And he's able to get it all the way down to the 20. A big play here for Buffalo. In today's NFL, you know, we talk about quarterbacks and their speed and accuracy, but there's still something about a guy slinging one downfield. And how about how he improvised right there because he got flushed out of the pocket, locked eyes with his wide receiver, who knew to just keep running. And he was able to lay that one out there for him to run under. And that ball whew, traveling 68 yards in the air, according to Next Gen Stats. So the field flips here as they'll go to work at the 20 now on first and 10. From the red zone now, they'll look to throw. Being chased out left. And he is into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen taking it in from the 20. And the Bills are able to extend their lead in the final seconds of this third quarter. The quarterback run has eaten him up all game long. Absolutely running almost with impunity. He's not worried about his body. He's not worried about sliding. He's not worried about protecting himself. He's worried about getting yardage. If you're on the defensive side of the ball, you've got to start figuring out what these blocking schemes are and finding ways to defeat them. An extra point by Bass. Up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. To the touchdown, Bass to kick it away. And this will come out to the 25 as Reed opts for the touchback. Coming to the line here to begin their next drive, the Seahawks offense. And they're coming off a three and out, my friend. I think they've got to look at that play sheet and go to a spot that they haven't come before. Time to shake things up a little bit to try and get this offense moving. Okay, so how do you do that? How do you shake things up? You look at what you've called before, <laughs> realize it hasn't worked so well, else. and maybe try and find one of those special plays from one of your better players, and maybe try and hit something big and get things going in the excitement area. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. You are watching the NFL on EA Sports.
Back now in Buffalo. It's the Seahawks with possession of the football, but they do trail here to begin quarter number four. Now it's second and nine. Here's Wilson to throw. This one into the hands of Metcalf. And he takes this up to the 40-yard line before being corralled. Well, I can put my defensive cap on right now, and I know they're saying don't give up any big plays now. They've controlled this game throughout, and all they want to do is see it through to the end. I think they let their guard down a little bit with that last completion. Sometimes when you're trying not to give up bigger plays, you don't react as fast as you should on other throws. On first and ten, it's Wilson. They'll lock it with a grab over the middle. And this will leave him a yard short. Nice pickup of nine yards on first down. From just shy of midfield, Wilson working the middle here. That's complete to Everett, the tight end. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. A big play there on the catch and run. At this stage, there's nothing left to do but to keep firing. And if you're a play caller, you may go off your sheet and use some things maybe you hadn't planned to in this game. Maybe that was one of them there that worked. So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Throwing again here, Wilson. And that'll be incomplete. Now defensively, you look at the numbers. Another incomplete pass that we just saw, and they're under 200 yards passing for the game, so they've done their job on that side of the ball. Yeah, recently I was actually working a game where a quarterback had a streak of five straight games without a 200-yard game. And that was a big talk, both in his town and amongst his team. How do we get the passing game going? So big credit to them, holding them under 200 today. And that one complete to Hart. Touchdown! Petty Hart from 19 yards away. And the Seahawks have got it back to a two-score game here in the fourth. Well, they needed three scores to have any chance. There's the first of the three as they get into the end zone. Yeah, Brandon, I think that our guys at Next Gen Stats in charge of the win probability are probably saying your chances still aren't great. But now, you've still got more than three minutes to go. you got to focus on the task at hand, which is going to be getting the football back as quickly as possible. Two scores down, three timeouts left. Still a chance if they can somehow get this one back. And the Bills are going to recover. Well, fourth quarter, they felt like they needed the football back. Unfortunately, they couldn't get it. And I know we brought analytics into the game, and someone has said here that the data says that when a team's expecting an onside kick, 80% of the time, the team expecting it, they do actually recover the ball, which is what we saw here. I just wonder if that number is much more of a anecdotal type of a number. Kind of like when the coaches tell us, well, when you score on special teams, 93% of the time you win the game. I'm still waiting to see that number is empirical. They'll run on first down. Singletary flashed the stick skills, but didn't get a ton from it. Stopped short of the 35. A gain of three, second down. And when do they start thinking about burning these timeouts? They've got all three still defensively. To me, you have to start right now. Here's the time, and that means you've got to stop them on defense, not give up the yardage, use your timeouts in order to get the ball back and try and score yourself. But now is the time to start using those timeouts. And keep in mind, it'll also stop the clock at the two-minute warning. And down right around the 32-yard line, four Last yards stop. on the pickup. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge.
Two minutes left to play in this football oh, game boy, here on one. EA Sports. I know you felt that one. we get you reset they've got a third down now as they look for one more first down to help salt this one away they'll try to run for this with Singletary and he's got this down almost to the 20 before he's dropped and quickly we're going to get another stop here with 154 left as they call the timeout defensively and not totally home free yet but it's looking good as they come up first and 10. Allen going to give this one to Singletary. And he's taken down after a gain of three as they move it from the 22 to the 19. Now the Seahawks call the second of their three timeouts as they'll head to the sideline and talk over what to do next. Second and six. No, scratch that. Second and seven. And Allen is actually going to throw it here. Dancing to his left. And he'll take it into the end zone for a Buffalo touchdown. Josh Allen scampering home from 19 yards out. And the Bills will add on to their lead. And that rushing touchdown is four puts him just one shy of the NFL record in a single game. And we all know he would love to get to that record and even beyond it. But he doesn't need to in order to impress in this one, does he? What a, what a performance. What an absolute great game that he's had here in this one. Extra point by Bass. Up and good. And that'll make this a three-score game now. The lead moves to 17. Touchdown, Bass to kick it away. Here's Reed returning. And they're going to start this drive in pretty good shape as they get it up past the 30. The Seattle offense now set to come back out on the field. They're down big here late. I don't know. You just one last drive here for Pride. Some people like to do that. I remember playing for a guy once we were down huge, and someone said, Coach, what do you want to call? He just waved a hand like, who cares? Let's they get out of here and do something <laughs> some other time. But some teams like to do something at the end to feel a little bit better yeah. as, they continue to, as they continue to move forward. Yeah, probably just want to put this one behind them. On first down, Wilson. That's into the hands of his tight end, Will Disley. And he gets this up across the 35 before he's out of bounds. Five yards on the catch there, brings up second down. Not a big window to throw. Coverage wasn't too bad there. Yeah, they had him under wraps pretty well, but somehow able to muscle his way open and catch the ball. Working with second and five now. From the shotgun, Wilson. That's complete to Disley, the tight end. And he'll be taken down, but not before he gets into enemy territory. Throwing now, Wilson on first down. A pass underneath for Carson. And he gets this inside the 35-yard line. Now they got to get to the line quickly. Again, Wilson. Over the middle complete. That's Carson. And he gets this one inside the 15, just a yard or two shy of the 10. From the gun, it's Wilson. And he finds Lockett in the end zone. Touchdown, Seattle. Tyler Lockett there to make the grab. And the Seahawks are able to close the gap just a bit. And yeah, that touchdown counts for their team. But I think it counts more for the fantasy guys, doesn't it? <laughs> yeah, it's just something maybe positive to look at on film. But this one's over, let's be honest. Yeah, I, th I agree with you totally on that one.
The extra point now coming from Myers. And the lead is trimmed down to 10. The drive summary that time, five plays. And it all culminates with a Seattle score. So two scores down, time definitely not an ally, but here comes the onside kick. And this is going to be recovered yes. by the Bills, and that should all but do it. They knew they needed a miracle. They had to have that onside kick. They didn't get it. Well, as we knew, even before they put the, the toe to the leather on that one, their chances of getting that done, slim and none. And I do believe we saw Slim just leave the door, didn't we? We did indeed. I think we're down to none. Buffalo set to get the football back here. And this one all over but the shouting, you might say. Now, there's one timeout remaining defensively, but probably no real need to use it here. Yeah, the only time they would use it, strictly for pride. The Bills on their way to victory now as they take the knee. Now the Seahawks forced to use their third and final timeout as the clock will stop with 33 seconds remaining. And they'll indeed take a knee. Listen, anytime you take a knee to end a game, that means you've won it. So it doesn't matter whether it's home or on the road, but there's something a little extra special about doing it in front of your home crowd, isn't there? And the home crowd applauding. They're happy with what they've seen. Chalk this one up in the left-hand column for a win. Yeah, that's right. Head to the locker room, throw the wristbands in the crowd for the kids, your gloves, your towels. Get to share it with the home team. So it's a victory here for the Buffalo Bills. And they were buoyed, Charles, by a big second half that put this one on ice. So you get the sense that whatever was said at halftime obviously hit home. I think it's a little bit more than that, though. Obviously, there are words that are said, and hey, come on, guys, we have to play better. But sometimes it's just sharpening your execution, sharpening your focus, and maybe doing the things you practiced all week without major adjustments, just doing them better. And that got it done in this one.